Washington has announced having evidence of a Russian plan to fake a Ukrainian attack. The plan will help Moscow justify the invasion of its neighbor. The claim from the United States came as Russia accused Washington of escalating tensions. The U.S. has sent 3,000 troops to Eastern Europe to counter a massive buildup of Russian troops near Ukraine's border. The Pentagon said that it had evidence of a plan by Moscow where it might film a fake Ukrainian attack on Russians to justify a real assault on its pro-West neighbor. One possible option the Russians are considering, and which we made public today, involves the production of a propaganda video, a video with graphic scenes of false explosions, depicting cor corpses, crisis actors pretending to be mourners, and images of destroyed locations or military equipment, entirely fabrica fabricated by Russian intelligence. Russia, meanwhile, has denied any plans to attack Ukraine. It has demanded security guarantees, including a promise that NATO will never admit Kiev. It could t will never um, uh, essentially invade a Kiev. It could take unspecified military action if its security demands are not met. According to the TASS news agency, the Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov dismissed the reports. He said that similar statements had been made previously but amounted to nothing. Moscow denied accusations in the past as well that it was trying to manufacture a conflict. Now for more on the recent updates, our correspondent Julia Chapman now joins us live from Moscow. Julia, thanks so much for joining us. This, of course, is a very significant news development. Washington has announced having evidence of a Russian plan to fake a Ukrainian attack, all in a bid essentially to justify the invasion of its neighbor. Tell us more about this. That's right. This accusation has been made by the United States, uh, citing uh, intelligence that it has uh, that Russia is considering among its many plans, possible plans for Ukraine uh, to stage this kind of uh, fake attack uh, and blame it on Ukrainians, uh, basically an attack on Russian speakers in Ukraine uh, on the pretext then that uh, there would have been a, a genocide against the Russian speaking population of Ukraine. Right. Um, they were planning uh, allegedly to uh, hire actors to in involve to be involved in this video to be staged as mourners. Uh, they were planning allegedly, according to the United States, uh, to use dead bodies uh, as corpses in this video. Russia has called this nonsense and craziness. They say that this is just the Americans trying to uh, throw another accusation at Moscow, and none of them are actually sticking. The United States says, well, they wanted to make this information public because that takes it off the table. The Russians then uh, wouldn't be willing to use this, having been exposed uh, to this plan before. But this is the concern that what Russia is plotting may not just be an invasion of Ukraine, something Moscow has denied, but a disinformation campaign to justify an invasion. And that is one of the big fears from the West. Right, absolutely. Now, Julia, all this, of course, is happening as uh, President Putin and President Xi, in fact, have wrapped up talks now in Beijing at the Winter Games. So will the Ukraine crisis be a major talking point? Was it discussed? Do we have any clarity on if the Ukraine conflict was discussed between the meeting between the two leaders? We understand that Ukraine was alluded to. It wasn't mentioned specifically in the joint statement that the two countries published after these talks. But they are now having lunch uh, in Beijing, a private lunch between President Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. And according to the Kremlin, that lunch will involve a discussion of Russia's security demands. So, you know, linked to Ukraine, maybe not specifically about any possible invasion. It is sure that President Putin is looking for support from Beijing. He certainly got a lot of it in that joint statement where the two countries condemned NATO expansion, uh, condemned the use of sanctions, the threats about human rights uh, as a lever of pressure on other countries. Those were all uh, condemned by both China and Russia. Uh, and of course, Russia expressed support, reiterated support uh, for the one China policy opposition to Taiwanese independence, which is quite noteworthy, of course, uh, because China hasn't ever openly uh, accepted 
that Crimea, the peninsula annexed by Russia from Ukraine in 2014, is part of Russian territory. That has always been a bit of a sore point. But China has provided uh, a way for Russia to turn for an economic partner in the years uh, of sanctions that it's been faced with ever since. Uh, so certainly we know that China is supportive of Russia's security demands. It does believe that NATO shouldn't be expanding and that military expansionism uh, of military blocks uh, is threatening to other countries. That has been Russia's line all along. And certainly it's likely to find a sympathetic ear in Beijing. Julia Chapman, thank you so much for all those insights and thanks for joining us from Moscow at this hour on Vion. Vion World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.